This video will run through the steps for taking an application running on the AMD Xilinx Korea KV260 Vision AI Starter Kit in Ubuntu to a Yocto or Petalinux build environment. If you like these types of videos, you can subscribe to my channel to get notified when I post new content. Xilinx, which is now part of AMD, launched the Korea System On module portfolio in April 2021. They're going for an ease of use experience with Ubuntu and pre-built applications that can be apt installed on target for evaluation. Systems on module, or SOMS for short, in general, are aimed at reducing time to market because a significant chunk of the system is a pre-designed, pre-tested known quantity. The SOM vendor can then provide software and firmware enablement for companies designing their product based on the SOM. I have a KV260 Vision AI starter kit with the K26 SOM, which has a Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC device. Given the affordable cost of this starter kit compared to other Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC kits, I think many folks using or following Xilinx have ordered it. There are several pre-built applications released by AMD Xilinx for the KV260. Smart Camera will be the focus of this video. Because the base OS image for the KV260 starter kit is Ubuntu, you can easily install these pre-built applications to try on your kit via apt install. The Getting Started Guide for the KV260 kit gives instructions to let us boot up the SOM and run the pre-built smart camera application in less than an hour. Those of us who've been using Xilinx boards for many years will recognize this as a big improvement in ease of use. But once you're done experimenting with the pre-built apps in Ubuntu, how do you switch over to do more advanced evaluation or to your product development flow with Petalinux or Yocto? But before we get to how to do that, Let's look at why a user might switch to Yocto or Petalinux for their own custom embedded Linux build. Ubuntu is a great way to get started. It offers an easy to use, pre-configured environment for doing development. And you can quickly pull in packages via apt install. So that makes it ideal for initial experimentation. Once it's time to get to more advanced evaluation or product development, Using an embedded Linux build that's trimmed down to just what your system needs allows you to have faster boot time, a smaller memory footprint, and get more performance out of your system. The sources for the Korea hardware and software that AMD Xilinx created are available on the Xilinx GitHub, so we can build with Yocto on the KV260 target to get a Petalinux runtime image. The Korea Application Developer Guide shows how to do that for the Smart Camera application as an example, and this video will walk you through those steps. To start off, we need the Petalinux Starter Kit pre-built SD card image. That can be accessed from the Xilinx wiki page for the Korea K26 SOM. We want the version of the Petalinux image that has the kernel version matching the Ubuntu image. In this case, both Ubuntu 22.04 and Petalinux 2022.1 use the 5.15 Linux kernel. Note that the Petalinux SD card image is different from the one in the Getting Started Guide, which was based on Ubuntu. In order to download this image, you would log in with your AMD Xilinx account. If you don't have an account, you can create one. So I downloaded the Petalinux image and burned it to my SD card. Since this is the smart camera application, I've got my KV260 starter kit hardware set up with the AR1335 camera module from the basic accessory pack, which is sold separately from the KV260 starter kit itself. I have the SD card plugged in, the ethernet cable is connected from my router, I have the micro USB cable connected to the UART, and I can have my power supply connected to the board before I get started because I have an outlet switch that I picked up for about five bucks at the hardware store. Additional information that we'll need before we boot up is the login username for this Linux image. You can find it on the Xilinx wiki page where we downloaded the Petalinux SD card image. You get to make up your own password. 
With the magic of editing, I've sped up the boot to the login prompt. Let's log in and create a password, which we'll need when we run commands with sudo later. OK, we're all set. Let's start the process of building on target. I'm going to speed up a lot of the processing time so that we can just focus on explaining what's going on. The basic Petalinux image doesn't have Git installed on it yet, so we'll use DNF to install the Git package. Once Git is installed, we can then clone the Xilinx GitHub repositories for the base application firmware for Crea. The firmware for the OnSemi AP1302 image sensor processor, which processes the camera input from the AR1335 accessory, and for the smart camera application. First, we're going to where the device tree overlay for the smart camera application needs to live. In calling DTC, the device tree compiler, to generate the device tree binary that's needed for smart camera. Then we'll copy all the smart camera FPGA firmware and AP1302 image sensor processor firmware to the correct locations under lib firmware. Next, we have to set up the runtime and build dependencies. I've copied and pasted these commands into a .sh file and sourced it as suggested in the instructions. It's very important to have the correct combination of versions for the smart camera application, Xilinx Runtime, abbreviated as XRT, Zocal Linux MPSFC Driver, Vitus Video Analytics SDK, abbreviated as VVAS, and Vitus AI Libraries. AMD Xilinx tells us what combinations they've tested, so it's best to use those to avoid compatibility issues. This library dependency page goes into the details of what matches up with what for each Xilinx tools release. Once all the desired versions of the dependencies are installed, we can build. Then install the smart camera application. And we'll see the binary appear in the location as indicated in the documentation. Now, before we test the application, let's make sure we have all the setup we need. I don't have enough space on my desk for another monitor, so I'll use RTSP for output. The documentation suggests FFmpeg to view the output. I went to the page recommended here and installed it on my Windows laptop. And instead of using the dp output command, I'll use the one that outputs to RTSP. Note, we're only rebuilding the software for the smart camera application. The AMD Xilinx pre-built FPJ bitstream is operating system agnostic, so we can reuse it. OK, so we have the application installed on our system. Next, we need to load it. If I list the applications installed, we see that the default K26 Starter Kits application is active. I'll unload it, list the apps again to see that it is unloaded, and then load the Smart Camera app. I'll run it, outputting the RTSP stream. Note that I'm using a slightly different command line compared to the Yoctoport documentation instructions, since those refer to the case where monitor is plugged in. Switching to the FF Play window, we can see the camera sensor pointing at the underside of my shelf. And now I'll put a photo in front of the camera sensor with a face to confirm that the application can detect and follow the face as expected. Hooray, it works! So for completeness, I'll mention that there are also instructions for building two other ways, since different developers have different workflows. And because it's something important to remember to avoid compatibility headaches, I'll mention it again. If you're going to try this in your own development, 
Make sure that you check what combinations of versions are needed for the tools, Vitus AI, and VVAS. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.